live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Citrix Synergy Atlanta 2019. Brought to you by Citrix. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend. Day two of theCUBE's coverage of Citrix Synergy 2019 from Atlanta. We're excited to welcome Principal Analyst of Creative Strategies, Carolina Milanese to theCUBE. Welcome, Carolina. Thank you for having me. So we were chatting before we went live about some of the great announcements that came out from Citrix yesterday during the general session. And one of the things that we, Keith and I, have been hearing over yesterday and half of today is Citrix has really done this pivot towards the general purpose user. One of the stats that they shared yesterday during the general session was, historically enterprise software has been designed for power users, which makes up 1% of the population. <laughs> so putting users first now, something that we really heard yesterday. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. That's my passion. When I talk about enterprise, the, the people that I really want to talk about are the final user of the technologies. And, and a lot of times, not only corporations design for the power users, but they design for the IT manager, which is even worse, right? Because that is in less than 1% of the workforce. And put things like security and, uh, if you like, the, the uh, the way that you can be productive first, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but that shouldn't come at the price of designing an app and a tool that really speaks to the end user and want the end user to be engaged. And so it was fascinating yesterday during the keynote here, Citrix talk about a, a service that Gallup ran and saying that 85% of a workforce is, it, is disengaged today. And, and they are because they often not have the right tool for the job. They don't have the right data available to them to understand what the task is that they're trying to achieve. So there's so much there that I think something like workspace is helping disenfranchise in a way and, and try and, and break into pieces and make it more user friendly. That's the best way that you thinking, think about consumerization is making user friendly tools. So user friendly and enterprise IT rarely go together. Like when <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, well, I remember moving from Office 2003 to Office 2007 and thinking, oh wow, why did I do this? This is not user friendly. We have five generations of the workforce in the workforce. Yeah. So there is you know, varying degrees of adoption. What do you think, how do you think Citrix is enabling not just the consumerization or bringing consumer products into the workforce, but adoption across generations. I think if you're starting with a user, you're in a good space, right? And, and so it doesn't matter if you are a baby boomer, a Gen Z, or a Gen X, or a millennial. We all want an easy life. We want something to be straightforward and not to get into in the way of us being productive and getting the, the job done. And so I think if you're starting with that in mind, making sure that you understand the goals that the company is trying to achieve, and then with the design, you're attentive at that simplicity, baking in security, so that security is at the core of your design and your tool, but doesn't get in the way. I don't want to use a tool at work that is not secure, unless it's more convenient for me, right? And that's how we always gone around um, what was available in the consumer space and we brought into the enterprise, either as a device or an application. And I think that putting simplicity first is allowing Citrix to avoid the issues so that IT departments don't have to worry about uh, you know, renegades that are going to bring in something from the back door, but really embrace this, this technology as a new way to think about how I work. And along those lines, thinking about how I work, I as an employee, you as an employee, Keith as an employee, we all have habits and tools and uh, ways of interacting with different applications that are really personalized to us. And as consumers, on the consumer part of our lives, we have this expectation that we're going to be delivered this customized personal experience. Whether we're going on Amazon to buy something, or Keith was saying the other day in Facebook, Microsoft surfs up an ad to him about not a service because they know he's bought one, but some additional value add accessories that might be beneficial to him. So those are things that we kind of 
more and more, I think across those five Absolutely. workforce generations are expecting. What are some of the things that you're seeing that Citrix is doing to enable that personalization at scale in a way that's secure? Yeah, by putting intelligence in the midst of all of this, because all the things that you're talking about, the example that you're giving in my consumer experience, are uh, enabled by intelligence. And so artificial intelligence or machine learning that look at you know, what ad I looked at or what page I visited, and you know, some of it is a bit stalking, but that's all right. Um, from, from a user perspective, that stalking is still giving me a benefit. Now, you take that into an enterprise environment, it's much easier because advertising is not something that comes into play, but when you're looking at what Citrix can do from an intelligent workspace, and so they are able, for instance, to look at, say I join Citrix in the marketing department, and they're able on day one to show me what my colleagues in the marketing department are using as their apps, their favorite apps, their workflows, so that from an onboarding perspective, my experience is already easier. I, I'm not you know, given a blank PC and I don't know where to go and they tell you, go on the internet, find what you need. That's really overwhelming if you're just starting a new position. So being able to look at how applications are used either at a, at a team level or across organizations. You can do this with analytics. You can see organizations that can belong to the same vertical, say they're in retail. Uh, they have a similar number to employees to yours. This is how they work. That's their best practice. And you can learn from that and then customize to your own needs. So we learned a new term yesterday, TOMO, total motivation the measurement of how motivated or how not disengaged yep. uh, employees are. So employee experience is becoming a big deal. You know, if I come to a new company and, they, and I have to wait two or three days to get a laptop or get my device, that's a pretty bad indicator of whether or not I'm going to be able to perform well in my function. I'm starting to think, are you seeing really great examples of enterprises that will make consumers jealous? Like, wow, that, that enterprise experience of computing is so great, I would like to have that in my life. There, there are some things I saw on stage yesterday, I'm like, wow, that would make bill paying so much easier. Are you seeing enterprises kind of uh, inject some ideas into the consumer space? I think that we are starting to, right? I've been in the industry for a long time yeah. and I've been preaching for a long time about how looking at consumers and, and putting the user first is important. We're just starting now to come around to the idea that consumer satisfaction is important, that consumer engagement, that, that, sorry, employee satisfaction and employee engagement is important. It dawned me yesterday that, you know, if you're looking at consumer brands, Engagement is the first thing they target because if you're engaged, you're going to be loyal. If you're loyal, you're going to spend more money within you know, the brand and the ecosystem that they represent. But yet, in the enterprise, we're not that yet. And so what you're, you're talking about will happen, in my opinion, especially with new technologies. If you're thinking about deployment of 5G or you're thinking about VR and XR, you know, there's a lot that uh, in a way takes us back to how technology used to be, which was not as affordable as it is today, and so will be deployed in enterprise environment first and then come to the consumer. And so along those lines, I see some things that consumer can look at and think, you know, that would be nice in my own life. If you're looking at workspace, why can I not use a similar solution to just organize my kid's life? Because I tell you, you know, <laughs> with all the after school activity and whatnot, um, you know, between me and dad, are, are, we're quite busy. <laughs> So you mentioned engagement, and some of the things that have popped into my mind as a marketer the last day and a half, when they talk about employee experience, yep. um, as a, how I'm hearing it from Citrix is this is a critical catalyst for digital transformation. Talking about the employee experience from the very beginnings of even recruiting for yep. talent and, and writing job descriptions to talent acquisition to training education. You guys both talked about some of the onboarding things that should be in place to make that process pretty seamless. But one of the things too that I think of in terms of employee experience is that, like a marketing funnel, nurture a lead, becomes an opportunity, convert it to a customer, but you want to you 
turn that customer into an advocate, turn those employees into advocates so that you're able to retain them, they add more value to the company. Uh, that was something that I thought was really pretty, I wouldn't say revolutionary, but it was, it was nice to hear Citrix talking about the employee experience as it really relates to the essential talent attraction and acquisition issues that a lot of businesses face. And one of the things that you said, looking at how they're using AI to look at tool efficiency rather than productivity of each individual Correct. is really a great way to foster that, I would imagine, loyalty on the employee side. It, it definitely is. I think that, you know, we talk a lot about millennials and the fact that they're going to come into the work workspace and, and they are expecting a different way of working because their relationship with technology is different from the relationship that my generation has had. Um, they are comfortable with technology. They use technology every day and they don't understand why it cannot be the same way. But I think beyond that, it's not just about millennials. I think it, companies really need to look more at what, uh, if you like, uh, you know, g digital transformation and consumerization of IT actually brings to the whole company. And either being, you know, yes, an employee for factor, but also a customer factor, you know, supporting your customer, increasing customer satisfaction. And I think a lot of times we need to get away from how we measure something new using old tools, right? So you're trying to justify why you should be deploying workspace and you're trying to cut down on, oh, okay, I'm going to save four hours a week. How much is that going to cost me? That's not it. That's the wrong way of looking at what a new tool and rethinking about your processes is bringing as a value to your company. And a lot of times it's soft. You know, it's, it's not a hard number that you can put. There are soft advantages that you're going to have. And like you were saying, you know, satisfaction brings loyalty brings the fact that every employee in your organization is going to be an evangelist for you. That, you can't put a price on that. So in terms of customer, I, I want to kind of uh, riff off that. If you're saying, because one of the things that they said yesterday is with workspace intelligent experience, we aim to give back every worker one full day a week, which is two months a year. And my first thought was, wow, how much is that going to save a company? Because one of the things that Keith and I have been talking about the last day and a half that also was announced yesterday was the seven trillion dollars yes. that companies waste every because, year on the yep. disengagement. So that certainly is something that was attractive yep. and was a very strongly resonating message, but you're saying, how should companies be kind of looking at that? Okay, so yes, I'm going to be able to save each person a full day a week, two months a year. How is that going to, one, turn them into advocates for the company, but what's the benefit going to be on the end user customer? Well, I, I think that if you spend less time fighting to get your job done and actually focusing on doing a good job, that's already going to benefit your customer, whatever customer it is, right? It could be that you're able to research whatever it is that you're doing. Like if I look at my job, if I can cut down an hour a day, I can spend that time reading you know, being informed, reading books or reading articles that will add to my thinking, engaging with, you know, my, my peers and discussing what is going on. The same thing can be in, a, in an enterprise, right, where I have actually time to spend with my manager and making sure that he knows if I'm happy or not happy, um, engaging with my peers to problem, problem solving, or spend more time with my customers. I, you know, I think a lot of times there's a little bit of a mentality of, oh, you're saving money so you're going to work less and so why would <laughs> I need to do that? Yeah. There's plenty of jobs to be done, you know, and so I think that saving that time and saving the aggravation that pushing paperwork or doing one thing that could take three steps in 15 steps it's just not helping you. It's not helping your morale, it's not helping how you then interact with your customers because you are unhappy, and that transpire, and transpire with your teams as well. So let's talk about 5G and the impact of 5G on employee experience. One, we're a little bit away from 5G becoming a thing, but when it's, talk to us about where it's at today and where the potential of impacting employee experience when it 
finally arise? Yes, we, we are a little bit away. Uh, we are starting to see deployment in, uh, in markets. Actually, today was uh, the launch in the UK uh, with uh, EE, and we had Verizon here in the US. So we're getting started. But for me, the power of 5G is twofold. Yes, on every uh, employee will have the power of have connectivity anywhere um, and, and anytime, which is you know good and bad because potentially you're never disconnected ever. <laughs> um, but the other side is that talking about that intelligence and that data, there's going to be way more of that. There's going to be more data available. So if you're thinking from an employee perspective of that availability of data and what that can do to you as far as understanding your, your customer base and how to serve them, that is going to be exponentially bigger just because so many more devices are going to be connected. And I think that for me is really what excites me about 5G. Yes, I can download a movie in one minute and five seconds, but that's not, that's not it, right? It is really about, first of all, new experiences like uh, augmented reality and what that can bring to an experience in, say, in a, uh, a retail environment, an experience environment, uh, entertainment, but then the, the amounts of sheer data that you can get from devices being connected. So, it's the, we're at the tip of the iceberg. It is. Carolina, thank you so much for it joining Keith and me on theCUBE. I know we could keep chatting, but we'll have to have you back, because this is a dot, 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 to be continued <laughs> conversation. We appreciate your time. Thank you. For Keith Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Citrix Synergy 2019. Thanks for watching.